Um, Kobe, obviously. Love Kobe. Obviously. I, I, can't, I can't say can't say anyone else. Uh, yeah. But I mean, why? I mean, why Kobe? I, I'm about to tell the you. Work I mean, ethic, the, the work ethic. The work ethic. He's 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 cutthroat on the basketball court. His skill levels through the roof, however, he works his butt off to have that skill level. And um just just talking with him, sitting down and going through some of the behind the scenes stuff that he does to not only physically prepare but mentally prepare, I think would be very, very fascinating and, and inspirational and something I could apply to my own life and, and my own business. He only lives 15 minutes away from this office, so maybe we can make that happen. So when we get off the podcast, let's go find him. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to The Real Advice Podcast. Today, we have Dalton Harbaugh of Harbaugh Homes, and today we are covering the top 10 questions asked on a podcast. Hey, we are with Mr. Dalton Harbaugh of Harbaugh Homes. And yes, before sir. we jump into today's special segment of the Real Advice podcast, please tell us who you are, what you do, what you like, what you don't like. All right. Well, what like you're you drinking. Drinking Nas, as always. <laughs> uh, well, my name is Dalton Harbaugh. I am uh, 29 years old. You're the first person to ever say their age. Yeah, well, got to know. 29. I'm a young man. Well, old compared to Jonathan, but <laughs> I'm a real estate broker. I work a lot in Orange County, buyers, sellers. Um, Jonathan and I known each other for quite some time now. But um, yeah, so on my hobbies, working out, playing basketball, uh, teaching Jonathan how to play basketball, <laughs> <laughs> that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Other than that, that's me. That's me. Awesome. And on today's segment, what we're going to do is something a little bit differently. We are using the top 10 podcast questions ranked on Google, oh, and we're going to go from top to bottom and ask you about them or ask you the questions. Let's, let me rephrase that. So the first question is, what is a common myth about real estate that you can debunk? Common myth? For real estate, uh, I think of buyers. A lot of people think you need a whole bunch of money in the bank in order to buy a house, and you really don't. So that's common. So how much money? Do, how much money do you need? There, there's loans out there where you don't need any money. You okay. get your your closing costs covered, your down payments covered. So really, no money out of pocket. You get a house. And so when you're marketing to somebody, or if an agent is wanting to spread that news to their audience, what advice would you give? Say it again, say it again. So this, this podcast is all about advice that we're going to give to agents. Yeah. Okay. And so you're saying one of the myths that you can debunk is the fact that somebody can buy a house with not a lot of money down. Right. As an agent, how do they portray or broadcast that message so that way they can get buyers with no well, money it's down? simple. Just use, utilizing social media, Facebook, putting it out there, letting people know that that is a real thing that does exist. Um, a lot of times what people think real estate is from the outside to the consumer. They really don't know the ins and outs of how it works. So, and, and I think that for me answering that question, a common myth is coming into the industry. There's a lot of things you do not understand how they work as well from the agent's perspective. From an agent's perspective. Absolutely. Um, and so what would you say, or what advice would you give to an agent that is looking to get into the real estate industry who is coming in, with the mindset that I can get my license overnight, I have a thousand Facebook friends, so I'm yeah. gonna have a thousand clients, this is gonna be easy, I make my own schedule, I don't work, money just is thrown at me every single day. Great question. So the reality is, and what I tell a lot of new agents is, when you start, you should give yourself a year, maybe two years to not expect any money to come in. Not even, not any money coming in, but you're actually spending money just to be in real estate. You're, you know, spending money on marketing. You got to get business cards made. You got to get all the different things made, a website going and let people know who you are. That all costs money. Meanwhile, you don't have buyers or sellers just lined up like, like people think. People think, you know, you're in real estate and money just flows in, like you said, and that's just really not the reality. And um, yeah, so be prepared to not make money immediately. And second, when you make commission checks and it's, you know, 10, 15, 20, 25,000 or more, whatever the case may be, you can't just spend it all immediately. You got to be prepared for when the next uh, client's going to come. It might be six months from now or a 
couple of days from now, it's, it's, it's tough to know. So always thinking ahead, planning, being prepared. I'd say it's, that's, that's a big thing. And being uh being a real estate agent the next question actually feeds right into this perfectly and the question is what do you wish you would have known prior to getting into the industry that you have unfortunately realized by being here does that make sense yeah i'm trying something to that you wish you would have known prior to jumping into the real estate industry um well originally when i was brand new i was thinking well I want to go directly into the, the luxury market, obviously, right? I want to make bigger commission checks. I want more expensive houses, higher end clients. Um, I wish I would have known that being in your own neighborhood that you grew up in can potentially make you a lot more money than chasing where you think the money's actually at. Because you know a lot of people in the community. You know the community very well. You're tied in. You know the ins and outs of where exactly you want to live in that neighborhood. You are an expert of that neighborhood without you really realizing it. So take advantage of that early on in your career and establishing yourself as the top dog in your own neighborhood, I think is, is something that's very valuable. And I think that it's important for everybody to understand is even with social media and marketing and just anything in general, the larger audience that you're trying to attract, the harder it's going to be because you have more competition. Absolutely. When you bring that audience size in, when you bring that niche to focus, yep. you understand who you're for. Therefore, your marketing should also uh, kind of resonate with who you're not for as well. And it should show through right. your marketing exactly the type of person. And like you're saying is it can be in a different area, but if you're already good at something, if you already know people, if you're already right. working something specific, if you were to just focus on that and give it a thousand percent, you're going to do a lot better than continuing to chase. Now, will those opportunities, if you continue to chase, uh, lead to something down the line? Yes, but jumping into it, your piece of advice is what exactly? Wrap, summing that up. Pretty much don't abandon what's already there for you. You already know people. You already know the community. Why would you go start in a new neighborhood and try to relearn all of that when it's already sitting there in the palm of your hands? The next question feeds right into this, oh, which wow. is why do you think most real estate agents either fail or quit? That exact reason. They go chasing money in the wrong areas because they get overwhelmed very fast at realizing how much money they now have to spend to saturate a brand new market. They don't know anyone in that market. They don't know the houses, the neighborhood that very well in that market. And that all is very, very overwhelming for any real estate professional, let alone a brand new real estate agent. So what, what would you say would be some resources or some things that have helped you um, that somebody should be looking into if they're not looking into them already? Um, well, a resource that I use a lot to, to just meet people in my neighborhood is I work out at my local gym all the time. I'm playing basketball with local guys all the time. Um, I'm, I'm part of a Muay Thai gym where I get to meet new people. Uh, the church in my community, I meet a lot of new people. So it's just going out and being part of the businesses and, and things to do in your own community just to reach out to some people you might not already know and just reach out and meet new people. And I think it's convenient also that if you're meeting new people, plus you work in that area right. already, yep. it's a much easier, <laughs> hey, I actually do this in this area, as opposed to, like you said, chasing down a new area, going into a new type of market, working with a different type of person that you wouldn't have been around. Exactly. You're just going to have to work harder, work longer, do more research, stay up later. Yeah. Um, yep. and, and so your, your kind of piece of advice on that would be to Focus on your backyard before you try and hop the exactly, fence. Exactly. That's <laughs> it. That's it. What do you wish the industry as a whole um, needs that it doesn't already have? Meaning, I personally believe a lot of people focus on their business and they focus on business planning. They focus on business goals, but they don't actually plan their lives. They overlook a lot of their personal aspects. They overlook a lot of things to focus on 
X amount of calls, X amount of doors, X amount of money, when at home, things are not as good as they'd like them to be. What do you think the industry is missing? I agree with everything you just said. That is all 100% true. Um, I was thinking something more along the lines of, there's too many real estate professionals who are just too money hungry. They do it strictly for the money and not for the client. A lot of times you got to set that aside and do what's best for the client, you know, making sure that they're getting exactly what they want, what they need. So give, give us an example of when, when, when's the time that you would have done that? Well, for an example, I had a client recently who was in a position that I was working with to help him get his loan situated. And after working with him for a while, the, the expectation was I was going to be his real estate agent to obviously help him get a property. He quickly then found out that it's going to be a for sale by owner. He's going to buy uh, the house that he's actually renting. So at that point, real estate agents know I'm not going to be making any money on this deal. I'm now cut out. A lot of real estate agents at that point would say, I'm out. I'm not doing it. I'm not making any money. I'm not doing it. However, this is a friend of mine, someone I cared about, someone I wanted to make sure wasn't taken advantage of. So I said, I'll, I'll, I'll help you. I'll be your agent. However, I'm not expecting any, any payment. I'm just going to help you out, right? And within weeks, it turned out to he decided he's not going to buy the house that he was renting anymore based upon investigation of the house and the condition it was in, what he thought it was in better condition than it actually was. Quickly and found out we're going to actually go shopping for another property. Guess who was the agent now for that? Me, because I wasn't looking at making the money. I was looking at doing what was right for the client, helping him out, even when I knew I wasn't going to be making money. In turn, it helped me make commission. So having your priorities straight and not just being money hungry, I think uh, the industry is lacking those kind of agents. And so what what would you say the industry needs to either focus on education, they need to focus on training, they need to focus on resources, they need to focus on what What could cure that? Well, I mean, what's tough is I don't think resources or training or, or anything really will alter that. That's more of someone's own morals and just how, how they So you think things. that there's a lot of unmoral people that are yes, joining the industry? Yes, absolutely. There's, there's some people who are... Yeah, just not very trustworthy people. And yeah, exactly. And unfortunately, it it paints a bad picture for a lot of the good real estate agents out there who do really care about their clients. And unfortunately, we all get grumped, uh, grouped into one pile as, oh, they're, they're money hungry. They're salesmen. They're just doing what's going to work best for them. And that's not always the case. So the barrier of entry is rather low. Um you know, I've heard some people joke about the fact that if you have a heartbeat, you can become a real estate agent. Uh, what would you say is maybe something that you would recommend if, if the National Association is listening? Maybe they need to change their barrier of entry a little bit because there's too many people with licenses. Absolutely. Or, That's a great point. Um, so it, what would you recommend? <laughs> what, what would that barrier of entry look like for you? Um, the barrier of entry, poss possibly... Um, Maybe college courses are required because, you know, a, a lot of people don't want to take the time to really study real estate the way it should be studied. If it's as simple as just online courses, well, anybody is interested in just taking a couple online courses. It's easy. If you make that a little more difficult and say, well, you're now paying more money. You actually have to go to a physical place to study. You have to get into a college, whatever it may be. This is just an example. Um, that might detour people away, making the actual test more difficult to pass may cut some people away that maybe didn't study as much as they should have or take it as serious as they should have. A couple of things like that put in place, I think, might weed out some of the people that are doing this just as a side hobby rather than as some someone that's actually trying to make a true living and, and actually do a good job doing it. I think if the real estate commissioner were to change the rules where any real estate agent has to work under a senior agent for one year as a mentor for one year, and they also have to work with that person like a normal job, nine to five, same holidays, same federal holidays, same days off, everything, like a nine to five, I'd probably say, I don't know, maybe half of agents would not be able to make it. That's a great point, and, and I agree. And, and that's because, one, a lot of people are coming into the industry because they wanna work on their own, they don't wanna work with anybody. So just forcing them to get mentored, oh, 
screw that. I don't want to do that. Right. Another one, forcing them to work yeah. would say, well, I, the reason I'm joining is because I didn't want to work. Right. And, right. and I think a lot of people that if they went through that one year process, they would also become much more successful because they would see what works, what doesn't work. Yep. What are the intangible things that we're not taught? Commission breath, for example. What yep. are the things that, you know, the most successful agents are doing? Working in their backyard, focusing on a niche, taking care of their clients, uh, and doing the right things. A lot of the things that sound cliche are the things that most top agents are doing at a high level. Right. What are your thoughts on that? No, I completely agree. I completely agree. Um you know, real estate, again, is it's a it's a perception that people have that from an agent's point of view, you're going to make a ton of money and not have to do a lot of work and your hours are extremely flexible and you're your own boss. But if you don't take all those things serious, like a real job, like you just mentioned, you're not going to be very successful and you're not going to bring a lot of value to any of your clients either, because at the end of the day, you really just don't know what you're talking about. The next question is. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? But I'm going to actually rephrase it slightly. If you can have one superpower to help you in real estate, what would that superpower be that could help you in real estate? Whether it's flying, so that way you can fly to appointments, whether that's going back in time, whether that's, uh, I, I don't know what it might be. The jump shot is not going to help Gosh, you in, in real man, estate. A superpower. <laughs> this is a very tough question. Um, oh man, can I flip this back on you and ask you what your superpower would be? My superpower. I think I'll put you on the spot. I probably would say, um, um, like, like what? What is it called? Like time warp or something? Like just go from here to the next appointment to the next just appointment. Want to be able to move to quick. Next, I just want to. Go go quickly. I think there's a lot of time in between. There's a lot of this, a lot of that. So, yeah, I think that would help also in real estate. If you can be, you know, go to an open house and then flash yourself back to the office and flash yourself to a showing, another showing, another showing. But, Absolutely. But you can't take mine, so. Shoot, I'm still trying to think of one. I don't know. Uh, man, oh, man. What are some uh, examples of some superpowers that are out there? You can fly. Why do I keep thinking? Yeah, only you just fly. keep going back to flying, fly. time warping, and moving <laughs> super fly. fast. I don't know. I'm not. I guess I'm not interested in moving super fast. Um, maybe I want a superpower of precision. Could that be a thing? Precision. I want to be very precise with um, uh, business planning, being precise, utilizing my time properly, being precise, being able to schedule out things properly, being precise being precise with clients. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just spitballing precise, here. Being precise. a precise superhero. What are some examples thing, right? of superpowers? Super strength. <laughs> no, that one's not going to help in X real estate. X-ray vision. I mean, I, what is that going to do? I don't <laughs> yeah, know what that's going to do for me. You, oh, you can see the faults in any house when you're Oh, okay. Now we're them. talking see? about something. Can, yeah. Some type yeah, of X-ray like vision. So I can, I you can, can walk into a, a house and say, this is what's wrong with it. Yep. This I can is, see literally behind these walls and the electrical is terrible. What about the, the, the vision to see how the transaction or is maybe gonna unfold? how the transaction is going to unfold? Yeah. How the other real estate professional acts? Well, <laughs> well, what I was thinking about when you originally asked me that was the ability to see into the future. But then I was thinking, I don't know if I want to see into the future. The ability, that might be terrible. The ability to double in every deal. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's good. Let's go with that. The ability to close escrow in one day. Yeah. No. Um, if you can be a food, this is the next question. We're going off the top 10. If you could be a food, what food would you be and why? <laughs> What is a food that everybody loves? The American food. How about a Dodger dog? I want to be a Dodger <laughs> dog. I mean, that's a famous food right there. Famous if you're a Dodger fan. Yeah, well, I mean, they got angel dogs too, right? Same yeah. thing. Yeah, but they don't. Costco they dog. Don't, those don't Let's get eaten Costco in dog. October. <laughs> I think Costco dog is. Uh, Costco is pretty good. I mean, well, I'm talking about $1.50 here. I'm getting a Costco dog and a drink. I mean, that's that's it right there. The pizza. Do you like the pizza or the hot dogs better? No, 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 no. Or the, the, the hot dog. The hot dog? Yeah. How the, do we get those the delivered? Dalton dog. The Turn Dalton dog. The Dalton dog. The last question, I think, I think that was 10. It sounds like more, maybe less. What are you not very good at? What am I not very good at? Ooh, 
what am I not very good at? And I think it's a it's a probably a reason why it's on the top list is because a lot of people portray themselves not necessarily that they're doing it on purpose, but somebody's going to watch this podcast and they're going to instantly they're going to come to some type of judgment. Yeah. This person can do this. This person's yeah, perfect. Absolutely. He's on a podcast. I wish I could be like him, blah, 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 blah. So this question is just trying to kind of rehumanize yourself a little bit and say, look, I'm just like you and I'm not good at X. Right. Funny enough, we're here doing a podcast. Um, <clears throat> you didn't think you were good enough to be on the podcast. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Like, I'm actually naturally a shy person who's not very outgoing. Um, when I'm around people I'm comfortable with, I'm extremely outgoing, entertainer, that's fine. But when I'm around a bunch of people I don't know or I'm in a room full of strangers, I'm an introvert. I'm quiet. I kind of just look around, I watch, I observe, and I wish um, that I can become better. And I know I can be just with a little practice and just put myself out there of just talking to strangers, getting to know people and feeling more comfortable in, in you know rooms with a lot of people I don't know. So for somebody else that's going through that, they're an introvert, they're listening to Jonathan Hawkins and Jonathan Hawkins is saying, hey, look, you got to be out on social media. Yep, yep. You got to be doing this in marketing. We got to put you out there. We got to be doing video. We got to be doing this follow up campaign. Mm -hmm. You know, rather than cold calling and door knocking all day, you should be on social media yep. because 67 percent of buyers are finding their house online. Yep. So what would you say to somebody like yourself? Uh, who's going through this process, what's what's one thing they can do to help themselves? Just take the leap. Go do it. Stop stop worrying about what other people think about you. You know, get to know really who you are and be comfortable with who you are and just put yourself out there. And Go does do that it. and does that mean take out your phone and do a five second video, then try to increase to twenty, then thirty, then what, Well for what, some what people they're they might be nervous enough just to get their phone out and take a selfie of themselves. You know, you know, they don't want to be seen on social media. Maybe they want to give out information, but maybe they're insecure with the way they look or maybe the image they think they portray or whatever it is. It just keeps going back to what they think other people think of them. And that discourages them of doing what maybe they actually want to do. And I think it actually goes all the way back to what we started at in the beginning, which is finding who you're for, therefore eliminating who you're not for. So that way, it's much easier to pull out your camera and understand the right. type of people that you work with, the type of people you like, the type of people that like you, yep. and not worrying about somebody who doesn't believe what you believe, not worrying about somebody who's in a different right. area, not worrying about if this person is going to judge me because I said this, we're not going to do business together. It goes all the way back to finding out who you are. That's why when I go through five different concepts, when I privately consult with somebody, the first thing that we always do is what is your main concept and what is your main offer? And we define that based off of what's the one thing that you're really good at? What's the one thing that you want to sell? And what's the type of person you want to work with? Because right. if you understand who you want to work with, then you can do things. I don't, I don't want to say more easily, but it's not as frightening if you're talking to a stranger in a market where you don't want to lose business as opposed to, hey, I'm just talking to my friends. Right. I'm just talking to the people in my backyard. I'm just exactly. talking. We're talking about this community event that's happening right here down the street. You guys should go check it out. I'm going to go check it out tonight. You get what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. And um, like I said, it's just make the leap. Go do it. Know who you are. Know your audience. You just you're just being yourself anyways. You know, if people don't like you, that's fine. Not everyone's going to like you. I've asked you 10 of the top podcast questions on Google. Do you have any questions for yours truly? Mm. Questions for yours truly, Jonathan Hawkins. How do you truly enjoy doing these podcasts? Is this something that is fatiguing to you? Is it something you look forward to is a very enjoyable. Tell me truly how, how you like this process. Well, I think that it's good because it gives us a lot of content that we can use. So from this 30 ish or so minute episode, we'll have multiple pieces of content that we can use um, in multiple formats. So not only do we have an audio version of the podcast, we have a video version of the podcast. Mm -hmm. We take the podcast and have a blog written about the podcast. Uh, from the longer form video, we take different segments and have more segments. 
But really the thing that I like the most about it is when we dive into those segments and we get that 30 second to a minute, just short little clip and we put yeah. it out on social, somebody watches it and comments and says, man, I understand exactly what that person's going through. Yeah. I, I'm glad I heard that today. Yeah. I'm glad this person said this. I'm glad, you know, man, I was thinking about doing this, but I just needed, you know, to hear that reinforcement that I shouldn't be seeking new business opportunities and new endeavors and new right. locations. That's what I needed to hear today. So for me, the reason that this is called real advice is because it's real. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Sometimes people are crying. Sometimes it's ugly. But just like you and I just chatting, that's all we're doing is we're chatting. Yeah. Yep. And the focus is on how can we help people? How can we right. help them create a business and life that they love as opposed to you're not going to come onto this podcast, listen to this podcast and just be like, oh, just another podcast. You're going to say, right man, I actually got something out of this. Like yep. he actually told me what he would like, what he wouldn't like. I agree with that. I disagree. Whatever the case may be, right. we're giving out advice specific to the real estate industry. But I think that it also can help anybody in any industry. Look, apply this advice to your industry. Yeah, Stop going sure. after all these people. Focus on this. Do this. All these different things. That's the reason that I like it. Yeah. Plus it knocks, it knocks out which I recommend to people to find things that knock out multiple things with one stone. Absolutely, This does that for I mean, us. this can be stripped back as, as basic as just maybe you're someone that wants to make more friends or maybe you're trying to find a girlfriend and, and, or a and boyfriend. The first one is very, very, very uh, powerful because having the podcast has allowed me to talk to people I would have otherwise thought there's no way I can talk to that person. Yep inviting people onto our show has also given us the ability to go onto their shows. Right. And because it's a reciprocal thing, you help me, I get you in front of my audience. Yep. Okay, let me put you in front of mine. Right, let me right. open these doors up to you. Yeah. Based off of the connection that we make on the podcast. Now we see people from a different perspective and we see what we wanna see, we judge based off of what we wanna judge. But having a 30 minute to 45 minute conversation with a brand new person, they're gonna understand the things that you believe in. You're gonna understand the things that they right. believe in. And <laughs> there is a lot of opportunity that has that have come with guests that have been on my podcast. Yeah. That for the first time we chatted on a podcast. Right. And yeah. and, and again, most people are not gonna turn you away. And if they do turn you away, then again, that's just somebody that you're not looking, they're not looking for you, so you're not looking for them. Right, exactly. Any more questions? No, I mean, who's gonna win the uh, the Laker game tonight? Lakers and Hopefully uh, the Lakers. Hey, all right, my boy. Hopefully We're the good. Lakers. We're good. Hopefully. Always a Laker fan. There you go. E like even when they're doing terrible. Okay, the last question for you is, if you could meet and have lunch with three people today, dead or alive, who would those three people be and why? Um, okay, well, one that I've been watching a lot lately who I really like, who just motivates the crap out of me, Gary V. Simple, done. Um, why? Well, because he's, he's, he's motivational. He shoots you straight. There's, there's no BS. It's straight to it. It's cut and dry. Do this, you get this. I love that. I like to sit down and have him say, look, man, this is where you're messing up. Just fix this, do this. Cool, all right. Um, Which is a, somewhat of the reason why we are even meeting today because I'm telling you, stop focusing on these things and do and, this and one do thing this. really yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, Kobe, obviously. Love Kobe. Obviously. I, I, can't, I can't say can't say anyone else. Uh, yeah. But I mean, why? I mean, why Kobe? I, I'm about to tell the you. Work I mean, ethic, the, the work ethic. The work ethic. He's, he's, he's cutthroat on the basketball court. His skill level is through the roof. However, he works his butt off to have that skill level. And um, just just talking with him, sitting down and going through some of the behind the scenes stuff that he does to not only physically prepare, but mentally prepare, I think would be very, very fascinating and, and inspirational and something I could apply to my own life and, and my own business. He only lives 15 minutes away from this office, so maybe we can make that happen. So when we get off the podcast, let's go find him. And I think what's important is one of the things that you said is he's he's relentless, but he's not just relentless on the basketball court, now that he's in uh, 
directing. Now he's producing. Now he's winning awards in that field. Now he's coaching his daughters. And you can see the success of his daughters and their teams already because of that work ethic, which is ain't nobody going to beat me. Right. Ain't nobody going to beat me. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And your last person would be? Uh, my last person would be, because I'm also a big fan in the, um, in the uh, commercial real estate side of things, bigger buildings, long-term investments, multiple doors. Who am I talking about? Mr. 10X yourself, there you Grant go. Cardone. That's, that's my guy right there, Grant Cardone. Very down-to-earth dude. He comes from humble beginnings, which I like. He's um, he just found a way to become very, very successful, I think, just through, through hard work. And um, he's someone I love to sit down and, and chat with, and I think he'd be pretty entertaining to sit across and talk with. Too. If you had 10 minutes to sit across the table from Grant Cardone, he walked into this office right now, he gave you 10 minutes, what would be the first thing you ask him? Man. That's we tough. put people on the spot on yeah, the podcast. I mean, shoot. I mean, you got. I mean, I mean you got to take advantage just, of the time. You just time warped me with your you with your superpower you have. And time warped the time warp. Sitting with Grant Cardone. You're you sitting with him. Spot. You have ten minutes to get as many questions asked or answered, or maybe it's only one thing. Maybe it's just that one thing that you. Hey, I would really want to put this in front of him. Maybe it's an opportunity. Hey, you should be looking into this. What What would that one thing be that you'd want to talk about? Mm, I'd say the first big step on how do I make a tran the transition from looking at single family residents to obviously making the big jump into apartment complexes. If I'm talking about a 16 unit complex, there's some major jumps that have to happen to transition that. What's the first major thing I should really focus on to make that transition? One as an investor and one maybe to get into the circle with people who are investors. Something so, along those lines. So this is what I want you to do, because you said that you're a little bit of an introvert, a little bit of a... Yeah, I'm shy. Shy person. What I would like you to do, and my challenge, which would be the, actually the first time I've ever done this, oh, is boy. I would like you to look into the camera, right, right in front of you, okay, as if the camera were Grant Cardone. He's giving you 10 minutes, and... The question that you just asked, you're going to say, hello, my name is Dalton Harbaugh. And my question for you, Grant, is bam. All right, Grant. My question for you is how do I make the transition from single family residence, not only as a as someone who's looking to invest, but maybe trying to get into this circle with people who do invest, who do it well, like yourself. What is the first thing that I need to do to make that leap, to make that jump, to know that I'm not putting my focus and time into the wrong, uh, wrong area. Where should I focus? What do I do? And uh, I want to start and begin. Thanks, Grant. Nice <laughs> to see you. Let me get that accent. This camera doesn't talk back. Well, the, the camera doesn't talk back, but the good thing about it is social media talks back. So that's true. What would 10x? What would an answer from him be <laughs> worth to you? That's the next question. <sighs> Really, anything coming from Grant's going to be worth something. I mean, the guy knows what he's doing in the industry, I would think. Well, we know, we, we, we know some people who know some people, so we're going to get an answer. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. If I knew the answer, I wouldn't be asking that question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so how long, what, how long do we have to get you an answer? Like, let's put a time frame on this so that way we can make sure here where we get you an answer. What, what, what do you think would be a can good challenge? In, can you do it in 30 days? Oh, I thought you were about to say 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> 30 nice days. 30 All right, days. So, so listen up, everyone. We have 30 days to get that video edited and produced and put in front of Grant where Grant will answer. Can, can we do it? Can I get a head nod, yes or no? Bam. We're good. Bam. I got the thumbs up all around. Grant. And so so here, here, here's the challenge. Let's 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 put a challenge behind it. If you do it, what what would what 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 would we give them if they got an answer? What would we give them if we yeah, get an yeah. answer? Yeah. Like let's put a challenge behind it. Like if they have 30 days to get this answer, if they get the answer, they get X. Oh man. 
It could be a uh, dinner. It could be a trip. It could be money. Yeah. Be a pat on the back. Yeah. What do you like? Do you like seafood? Do you like steak? What, you got any favorite restaurants? I'll take you out to a nice dinner. So a nice dinner Chow- is chowder on the barge? table. Chowder bar. A little chowder bar. <laughs> <laughs> do like you like clam chowder? chowder? <laughs> Sounds good to me, man. Clams uh, and clam chowder. Uh, Hans- Hanson likes his uh, country food. <laughs> oh, man. Country food, huh? <laughs> good, old, good old American country. So... <laughs> All right, all right. You Wrap, name it. Wrapping you this up, it. where can it. people find you on social media? Where can they reach out to you if they have questions, they want to connect? Where can people find you? Harbaugh Homes is my company. You can find me on social media under Harbaugh Homes. My name is Dalton Harbaugh. You can find me on social media under Dalton Harbaugh. I'm sure uh, Jonathan would tell me to combine the two of those and make it easier to find <laughs> myself. We're going to be working on that when the camera cuts. Um, but, that, yeah, that's, that's it. You heard it here first, Dalton Harbaugh, Harbaugh Homes. Check him out on social, reach out to him, and make sure that everybody who is listening to this tags Grant Cardone yeah. so that way we can get an answer from him on the question asked by Dalton. Take care, everyone. Hey, everybody, this is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins Official. Send me a comment, shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below. And remember, who you hire truly matters.